tonight why you might not see an iWatch in your stocking this holiday season. Sony's big U.S. mobile push and Facebook wants you to search your friends' old status updates on the go. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 162 for Friday, August 29th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by NatureBox. Order great tasting, healthy snacks delivered right to your door. Forget the vending machine and get in shape with healthy, delicious treats like chocolate quinoa granola. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. Hey everybody, I'm Jason Howell. Let's get right to the tech feed. Yesterday, we got official word from Apple that it will hold an event on September 9th. And although the event is expected to be a new iPhone announcement, the company didn't provide any more details than the tagline, wish we could say more. Recode reported on Wednesday that Apple would be also announcing a wearable at the event, widely reported to be some version of wristband dubbed the iWatch. But today, the publication passed along a report from sources that say it won't arrive to market for a few months or even early 2015, which would miss the holiday season altogether. Apple declined to comment, of course, but we'll know one way or another in a couple of weeks. Earlier this week, we spoke with The Verge's Casey Newton, who published an internal document from car ride service Uber that detailed a campaign to recruit drivers from a rival ride-sharing service, Lyft. Today, Lyft tells The New York Times that in instances where Uber ambassadors take rides to recruit Lyft drivers, those Lyft drivers experience a considerable drop in pay, and in Orange County specifically, earnings fall to $18.60 an hour. That's a 48% drop in income. And Lyft says drivers in other areas are affected by the recruitment efforts as well. At issue is the recruitment process by Uber, which is on average a shorter ride than normal, resulting in a nominal fee for the Lyft driver. This takes away from a Lyft driver's ability to pick up actual passengers who are going to take longer rides inevitably. Uh, today, Lyft sent a note to its drivers describing a more aggressive approach by Lyft to deter Uber recruiters from disrupting Lyft's service and harming their hourly pay. And that, quote, our system can now quickly identify the bad apples, even with burner phones, and put an end to the negative impact on you. Reuters reports that Japan-based SoftBank and its U.S. mobile carrier Sprint will offer a Sony smartphone for the first time, citing sources with knowledge of the matter. The deal could benefit Sony's mobile division, which the company said last month was no longer expected to make a profit in the year ending next March, and has managed only a 2.1% share of the global uh, smartphone market in 2013, according to market research from Gartner. In the U.S. market, the only carrier offering Sony handsets is number four mobile carrier T-Mobile, but that's going to change. Sony will also sell a soon-to-be-launched Xperia flagship phone in the United States via Sprint. Four sources familiar with the matter tell this to Reuters. And in Japan, SoftBank will make the phone available in time for the, for the winter holiday season. And yesterday, Samsung unveiled the Tizen-powered Gear S smartwatch that can make calls and go online without tethering to a smartphone and would include turn-by-turn -turn navigation provided by Nokia's Here mapping platform. Today, Nokia announced that Here uh, will be used on more Tizen smartphones and wearables, and a new licensing agreement with Samsung will put Here on Android for the first time in Galaxy-branded smartphones. Here will work in offline mode, just as it does on Windows Phone. And here for Android will let you download entire countries and regions, much like TomTom Tom or OpenStreetMap powered alternatives. There's no word on whether here will arrive again for iPhones after it was pulled from the App Store last December. Now, back to the Gear S smartwatch for a moment. Today, Samsung announced that a Nike Plus running app will be preloaded on the wearable when it goes on sale this October. The Gear S will have a curved two-inch screen that will be used by the Nike Plus app for giving feedback while running or displaying Nike Fuel stats. An audio player will also be built in so a user can set their run to music with Bluetooth headphones. Now, earlier this year, Nike laid off most of the wearable team, their hardware team, responsible for the Fuel ban, saying that it instead planned to focus on Nike Plus software for multiple platforms. The company released a Nike Plus app for Android earlier this summer, and although there, were, there is no Android Wear support yet, 
Now, uh, coming up later in the show, how an algorithm is going to make those annoying TV commercials just a little quieter, we can only hope. And up next, Nathaniel Mott from Pando joins us to talk about a new way Facebook's mobile experience will come back to haunt you. Uh, but first, would you like to snack more and guilt-free? You may be asking how. That's NatureBox. NatureBox snacks have zero trans fats, zero high fructose corn syrup, and nothing artificial. NatureBox sends great tasting snacks right to your door with free shipping anywhere in the U.S. Here's how it works. You click on the continue button to choose between three subscription options. Then you place your order and you can select by dietary needs. There's vegan, soy free, gluten conscious, uh, lactose free, nut free, non-GMO. You can also select by taste uh, if you like savory, sweet, or spicy. Uh, NatureBox has a hundred and more unique snacks to excite and delight every palate like Mexicana mango, pumpkin cranberry crave, and citrus kick almonds. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. And we thank NatureBox for their support of Tech News Tonight. All right, I want to welcome to the show Nathaniel Mott for the first time, writer uh, with Pando. How are you doing today, Nath Nathaniel? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great, and I am so ready for the weekend. Um, I can hardly speak correctly. But uh, before we even get to the weekend, we got to talk a little bit about Facebook. So thank you for hopping on to do this. Um, you wrote a story about a Facebook feature that's finally kind of starting to roll out to their mobile apps to a few people after being a part of the site for a while. Can you explain what this new feature is all about and why it's such a big deal for users? Well, basically, it's a tool that's going to let you look through friend status updates from however far back in the future using certain keywords. So it's like instead of only being able to search for photos your friends have posted or for places they've checked in, you can also look through uh, specific status updates and comments. So it's, it's basically a more involved version of Facebook's graph search. Okay, now Mark Zuckerberg um, has said himself in the past that Facebook is a mobile first company, yet big features like this one are delayed coming to their mobile apps until later they appear on the web before they appear on mobile. Is Facebook prioritizing mobile well enough, do you think? Should this have been uh, on mobile to begin with? I mean, absolutely. Graph search itself should have been on mobile to begin with. It, it was months between the desktop launch and the mobile launch, even though Zuckerberg said at that event, oh, mobile is really important to us. You know, we need to make sure that it's part of our DNA moving forward. And he offers all these platitudes. And then when it comes time to actually introduce products, you know, it's almost always here's something on the desktop. You can wait a few months. Maybe you'll get it on mobile. It's hardly a guaranteed thing. And even now, this is only rolling out to a couple users. Um, comparatively. And when you consider the fact that Facebook has more than a billion monthly people or people accessing its mobile apps each month, and there are more people accessing it through smartphones versus desktop computers, that it just seems crazy. You know, they're holding on to their most interesting features for months and not giving them to the majority of their users. I guess it gives the users something to look forward to when it finally gets mobile. <laughs> Unless they never go on desktop and they like, wait a minute. <laughs> So maybe they don't know what they're missing, but yeah. at the same time, that hardly makes it part of Facebook's DNA. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now, you've written in the past about graph search, of course, and how much data can be found on a person with that tool. Does mobile access to all of this info kind of change the game at all here, do you think? I mean, I think it makes it easier if you're sitting around with your friends and you want to embarrass them. You're like, oh, hey, you remember when you said back in 2011, like, how much you really, really liked that Paramore song? Like, you know, oh, here's the proof right here. Um, you know, in the sense that more people are going to be able to look through the past on Facebook, I think that's important. But I don't think it's going to make people search for things. So it's less about, I think, the feature itself and then more about how long it took to get to mobile um, and what it stands for, which is Facebook doesn't forget ever. Mm -hmm. um, and now your friends don't either. None of us forget anymore. Uh, exactly. Now, Facebook announced bandwidth targeting earlier this week to match mobile ads to network quality. That's, of course, beneficial in emerging markets where Facebook is accessed primarily on mobile. As graph search becomes a global tool to anyone with a mobile device, does privacy on Facebook truly die or is it just long gone at this point? 
uh, there there was never any privacy on Facebook. <laughs> I mean, like all this stuff was accessible before. It's just that it's making it easier for you. I mean, who knows what tools they had on the back end for advertisers or themselves. Sure, sure. That all makes perfect sense. And I want to thank you for joining us today, Nathaniel Mott at Pando. Uh, really appreciate having you on today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me on. Yeah. Where can people uh, find your work online? Where can they search for you? Uh, you can just pando.com. I'm on there every day, about three times a day. And uh, Twitter is at Nathaniel Mott. So it's really easy. Excellent. Thank you again. We'll talk to you soon. Great. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. All right. And finally, some good news for people who hate loud commercials. That's me. Uh, I'm, I, for one, hate loud commercials. Back in 2011, Congress passed a law requiring that commercials aren't broadcast any louder than the TV shows airing around them. Today, the FCC announced it's making further adjustments to enforce that rule. Finally, beginning next June, a new algorithm will, will ignore silent or particularly quiet parts of a commercial that might be used to balance out particularly large part, lar uh, loud parts elsewhere. The new algorithm, quote, is intended to more accurately reflect consumer perceptions in situations in which the commercial contains both very loud and very quiet passages, end quote. That's what the FCC writes in a federal register filing. They continue with, in this circumstance, the new algorithm would result in a greater perceived loudness measurement than the old algorithm, therefore requiring the commercial to be adjusted. I really hope it's effective. I think we can all hope that. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash TN2. And of course, you can write us always at TN2 at twit.tv. Don't miss our morning news program. That's Tech News Today every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Jason Howell. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next Tuesday. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.